Hello and welcome back to Sandra's Shelf where I talk all things self-help, mental health and lifestyle. So today I wanted to make this video because this video is very important to me and it's something that I've been transitioning in the last two years and that every month I feel like I'm learning something new and I'm learning new ways to overcome people pleasing tendencies. This leads us to today's video topic which is how to stop being a people pleaser. Now, I'm going to go through my eight tips as to how to stop being a people pleaser and how to start valuing yourself and start putting your needs first and putting your self interest first. But first, I would like to talk about where people pleasing tendencies stem from. Now, although not all people pleasing tendencies start from childhood, a lot of it does come from childhood and your upbringing and how you had to react in your environment and around people. Sometimes it could have been that you live in a hostile environment at home where you had a parent that was either depressed or highly emotionally immature or emotionally volatile. And then as a child, you might have learned how to navigate their moods and always try to please them to prevent further moods from happening. This also could stem from codependency to a certain parent or even even codependency in a relationship when you were growing up. It could be with a mentor, it could be with a sibling, it could be with anyone. So sometimes when you have codependent tendencies, you tend to be more of a people pleaser because when you're so involved and intertwined with someone else, you want to make sure that they're always happy and so like that they won't reject you or you know you kind of take on the emotional burden of the other person. So that also creates people pleasers. Now going back to hostility at home, people pleasing can be a trauma response to that. It could be that there was a lot of high conflict at your house and then you were the one to always be the peacemaker or you hated confrontation because of that and that's why you became a people pleaser so that you will not have those conflict arise. However, at some point in life, everyone realizes that you cannot avoid conflict and you cannot literally control other people's moods and feelings. Now, another thing that could contribute to people pleasing is bullying. And and so it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it does make sense. So sometimes when kids or even adults or teenagers get bullied for a certain thing, they start to hide that thing or they start to be more accommodating to others to prevent bullying. And an example that comes to me from media is that typical nerd character in movies that offers to take on the workload of the jock character just so that they make sure that the jock character is always going to be nice to them and therefore no one is going to pick on them. So that can be another way of people pleasing. So you can develop people pleasing tendencies in order to protect yourself and try to not be bullied. But as we all know, that's not how it works in life. Now, another event that could have happened is is abandonment or rejection so it could be that you've been abandoned from a parent abandoned from someone that you love or rejected from a parent or rejection also as always having your needs not being met or somehow people have made you believe that your needs are not important so then therefore you realize that you need to continue being in this rejection mode so that you can actually be close to people or can actually be accepted by people by diminishing your needs. The core of people pleasing is that doing something in order for you to feel accepted, feel like you're not being abandoned, feel that you're not gonna be picked on, feel that you're not gonna be in conflict or hostile environments. But as I said, that doesn't end up happening. That just prevents you from living your authentic life and that it just prevents you from developing the skills to be disliked and be firm and to self-advocate for yourself. Now that we spoke about some earlier causes leading up to people-pleasing tendencies, I'd like to talk about what happens in the long run when you keep on people-pleasing. Now, what can end up happening is that you start to feel resentful, you start to feel burned out, you can even be anxious and depressed because when you're always tailing your life around other people's needs and around other people's feelings and moods, then you just leave yourself behind and you just never can make the time to protect your own energy, protect your own space, to protect your own mental health. And at some point you just burn out, you're depressed, you're anxious, you don't wanna be around people, you, you don't 
don't feel like you're real you don't feel like you're a respected person in society you don't feel like you put you can put your foot down and it could be that even at, at points where you try to put your foot down people will react negatively right away essentially bully you back into being a people pleaser and then at some point in extreme cases what can really really happen is that after you've been so bullied after you've been a people pleaser for so long you can start to be so resentful that you do a 180 shift and then you become rude mean dejected you like basically treat other people like absolute shit okay and i'm saying this as someone that has gone through that so i've gone through everything i listed at the beginning and i've gone through all the aftermath effects as well so that's why i'm talking about this in this way because i've literally all of those things that happen trauma response bullying codependent parent hostile environment at home being the peacemaker being bullied like i said by not only just you know people at school but at home in relationship being in relationships afterwards where i was being mistreated not valuing my needs not valuing my time not valuing my energy because i put everyone else's needs above mine at all times feeling that love was conditional so i had to always please others i had to always be the best i had to always do things i had to always be vigilant at all times of everyone's emotion around me and then when you're living like that in these high stress environment and in this high stress anxiety inside of you where you're always like looking out for everyone else you burn out so quickly and not only that you start to feel that no one knows you no one cares about you you start to really understand that like unless you're being this person that is so accommodating no one cares about you no one wants to hear about your problems no one wants to help you no one wants to hear about your needs no one actually cares about your needs because you've always put their needs above yours right and then you feel like you're living this disconnected life this lie okay in life and what happened to me personally at some point i went to very severe moments of depersonalization that is like having an out of body experience seeing yourself live a life but you're not in your body you're not in your life you could feel emotions but you're like so numb to them that it's like it's you're being like a puppet in your own life and it's the scariest thing ever and you feel so disconnected and so dejected and then when you come out of that sometimes you just don't feel connected at all to the world and to the people around you like i said this can manifest in extreme ways where you're so depressed even suicidal or even the other way where you're so angry at the world you're so angry at people like you just want to hurt them back you just want to be rude you just want to tell everyone to fuck off like i've been there i i really been there and that is also not me people pleaser was not for me and being that person is not for me i now know that there is a balance and that it, there can only be in balance when i'm not a people pleaser but i'm still living a authentic version of myself every single day so i know that i'm very empathetic i know that i'm very sensitive which makes people pleasing tendency even worse for people that are very highly emotional very highly empathetic and very highly sensitive so having said all that this might sound like oh my god we are in a hopeless situation however i want to let you know that nothing is hopeless this can be worked on this can be a skill that you work on this these are like patterns of behaviors you can unlearn yes it will take time yes it will take hard work but in the end you will feel at peace with yourself you will feel at peace with your relationship and you will feel at peace with your environment so without further ado now we can go into the eight tips as to how to stop being a people pleaser first things first is that you need to understand that you cannot control other people other people are living their own lives they're doing their own thing and they have their own emotional responses and a lot of people actually go to the world with lack of self-awareness lack of like understanding of their behavior of their patterns and of the way that they use and even abuse other people or that the way that they project onto other people so it is your duty to yourself to understand that not everything is personal and that you cannot control another person you cannot people please your way to controlling another person and even if you think you do you actually are not you're just making this screen where this other person is allowed to manipulate you and that you're allowed to like counterintuitively manipulate them back just so that 
you know you guys can be like at an equal foot but this foot is not equal and this is very harmful for both parties involved okay it's harmful for you and it's harmful for them and when you're a people pleaser and you think you can control other people by being nice and by being subjugated to their abuse or subjugated to their every want needs and desires what ends up happening is that you get abuse and you just keep on showing yourself that you don't value yourself and that you're gonna let everyone walk over you for the rest of your life so you need to understand that you cannot control other people one thing that you can control however you can control it yourself you can control how you react to the world and you can control how you see yourself and you can control when you want to be nice and when you want to be firm okay this is what you can control you can control yourself you can control your reaction to other people and you can control your boundaries and this leads us to tip number two establish boundaries for yourself when you don't have boundaries and when you haven't established clear boundaries or you know worked on the boundaries because sometimes you could have a certain boundary and then it changes or you know you feel like oh you have new boundaries now okay when you don't work on them when you don't establish them when you don't define them or when you don't start defining them what's gonna happen is that you're allowing everyone to use your resources you use your time you use your emotional capacity people will walk all over you they will think you're a doormat and you'll never be able to say no or you'll never be able to set the boundaries so you need to establish your boundaries now the other thing is when you're first doing this you're gonna have to brace yourself to be okay and be understanding that other people are gonna not like it some people are gonna respect it some people are not gonna respect it some of your relationships are gonna improve some of your other relationships are gonna get worse and then in the best and worst case some of your relationships will terminate but that's okay because if people don't respect your boundaries and they have benefited from you not having boundaries they're essentially telling you that they don't respect you they don't respect your time they don't respect your needs and they don't care about you the way that you've been caring about them so boundaries are healthy boundaries are needed it's going to let you know who in your life is willing to work through them with you and who is willing to respect them because they want you in their life or because they actually respect and value you. And some people actually will be very happy and proud. Like your real supporters, they will be proud and happy that you're establishing boundaries because they know that or they've seen that you've let yourself be miserable or be abused for so long that they just wanted you to come to that conclusion. Those are the best people to be around, okay? And those essentially are normally the people that are trying to help you or encourage you to have boundaries or they try not to you know take so much from you and they try to give as much to you as you have been giving to them i've known some people like that and that's why after i started setting my boundaries in the last two years i've lost about five six friends but i've held and maintained at least five six friendships that i was like oh actually these people are healthy these people have always encouraged boundaries in me so be prepared okay this is the hardest step probably but you need to do it if you want to stop being a people pleaser if you want to start valuing your own life and if you want to stop being the punching bag okay to the world now my third tip is no more second chances if you try to establish your boundaries if you try to communicate many times with someone that x thing that they do or x thing that they say to you bothers you and they don't respect it or they don't you know they minimize your feelings then that person is not meant to be in your life that person will keep you stuck in people pleasing tendencies because you keep putting yourself back and you keep devaluing yourself devaluing what you want in life you're devaluing your needs devaluing your peace okay and it just shows to you that those people are not meant to be in your life this is like the last thing like this is the last chance if they can't follow the boundaries that's it no more second chances because the moment you give these people a chance they will take another one another one another one another one another one another one i've seen it happen so many times before i've even at some point established boundaries with a person like that and then realized that okay they started respecting the boundaries but they still didn't respect the other things so i was still giving them chances after chances to the point where at some point i'm like you know what this is not a friendship this is not something i want to keep on living and so that's why i'm saying no more second chances because unless it's someone that did something one time and then they felt apologetic and then they understood what they did was wrong and then they prove to you that they will not do it again okay that's something different but people that you keep on giving second chances to like it's not a second chance if you're on the 15th chance after the 15th chance at that point it's done 
And those people that are leeches and that literally will abuse you and will abuse the chances you give, they should not have any access to you, period. Like they should not have access to you. They should not be in your life because what they do is that they minimize your feelings. They minimize your needs. They minimize everything in you. And then if you don't think that's harmful enough, what ends up happening is that because other people have let you believe and let you accept how they minimize you, your feelings, your needs, your energy, etc. You end up minimizing that in yourself. So you end up being your worst enemy in yourself. You end up not valuing yourself. And that's why I say no more second chances. It's done. My fourth tip is to practice saying no. If you want to stop being a people pleaser, you have to start practicing saying no. Because a people pleaser is a yes man. And it's a yes man in the worst ways where it's saying yes to everything. Even if the things that you don't want to do, you don't align with. And basically you don't approve of. It's that classic parental advice of like, if your friends are going to jump off the bridge, are you going to jump off the bridge too? But I think that expression is not a good one. I think we should do something more severe where you're gonna start to understand oh maybe no i'm not gonna do that so if your friend is going to murder someone are you gonna murder someone too the answer is hopefully no right so when you're a people pleaser you tend to be a yes man all the time you tend to ignore your life your schedule your values for other people and you need to stop doing that right now if you don't want to do the thing if you don't agree with the thing and if you just don't feel like doing the thing okay you just don't feel like it you say no okay your friend is asking you to go out this weekend you don't feel like it no your friend is asking you to come with a concert with them you don't feel like it no your friend is asking you to write his essay no your friend is asking you this no if you don't feel like it if you don't want to and if this is part of your new boundaries you have to practice saying no people pleasers tend to say yes to everything and yes to everyone and that's why they're burnt out that's why you are burnt out that's why you cannot get on with your own life so practice saying no it's a great practice and not only that it helps you be firm it helps you be assertive it helps you show other people that you respect yourself you respect your time and you respect your own decisions so don't be afraid start saying no today and you will see that your life will start to drastically change because then when you say yes you know that's a hell yes or that's a yes i want to when you say no it's because no i really don't want to my fifth tip is to stop apologizing so now if you want to self-advocate for yourself, if you don't want to be a people pleaser anymore and you want to be authentic and just give back to the people that give to you, you need to fill your own cup before you can fill other people's cup. And in that case, you need to start embracing being unapologetic. It's like when you say no, you don't feel bad for it. You shouldn't feel bad for it. At first, you might still feel bad, but when you go to it and when you practice saying no, then you start to stop apologizing or stop being like, oh no i'm sorry i can't make it like don't say that just say no that's it simple stop apologizing for everything people pleaser tend to apologize for things that are not even in their control that they tend to apologize things on behalf of other people and i've been doing that my whole life every time i went somewhere and my mom said or did something that really made me feel embarrassed sometimes she was doing it out of ignorance sometimes she was doing it to be rude and other times she was doing it because she was setting her own boundaries but what ended up happening that i was the one always apologizing for her sake and i realized that why should i do that like doesn't mean that she's my mom that i have to be the one bearing her behavior and bearing her choices and bearing her mistakes or bearing her decisions right i don't have to apologize for another person I apologize for myself if I do something wrong or I believe that another person deserves an apology, but I'm not gonna apologize for being. I'm not gonna apologize for the things that I cannot control. I'm not gonna apologize for other people. They are the masters of their own life. So if they're not self-aware enough to apologize, then it's not on me because I didn't do that. You know, I didn't provoke that. Unless you had a personal stake into something where you harmed another person, I don't think you should be apologizing. And a lot of times I used to be like, sorry, sorry, oh, excuse me, sorry, 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 oh, sorry. And then someone would be like, stop saying sorry. And I'd be like, oh, sorry. You need to stop being like that. You need to like literally try and train and 
and just be aware and conscious every time you say sorry and then ask yourself okay why did i say sorry am i actually sorry or am i just being sorry that i exist being sorry that i'm taking off space like why are you saying sorry why are you not valuing yourself what ends up happening for people pleasers is that they end up being sorry for everything it's like sorry for existing sorry for breathing sorry for just being here you know and you cannot be like that if you want to live an authentic intentional valuable life you know you need to be like okay i exist like deal with it you know like i'm not harming you i'm not i and i don't want to harm myself i don't have to apologize for being here my sixth tip is to work on your self-esteem if you want to stop people pleasing and if you want to stop putting yourself down apologizing for being then you need to work on your self-esteem you need to build your self-esteem to the point where you don't really care or you don't really feel no ways when someone doesn't accept you doesn't like you or doesn't align with your views or the way that you lead your life right because oftentimes people pleasers lack self-esteem okay and on top of that it's for continuous people pleasing that they destroy their self-esteem more and more so how do you work on your self-esteem first of all you establish your boundaries you establish what you want and what you don't want in your relationship in your life in your day-to-day -day, in your energy essentially in everything then you establish what you can control and what you can't control you can control building your self-esteem you can control changing your life you can control being aware other things that you can't control and that you need to realize you can't control other people you can't control other people's emotions you can't control other people's emotional response etc so if you want to build self-esteem you have to start being firm with yourself you have to start you know understanding what you like what you don't like what you will tolerate what you won't tolerate and then because you start doing this and you start building these boundaries and these new habits where you say no and you only say yes when you want to you have more time for yourself and when you have more time for yourself you can spend more time with yourself and you can work on things on yourself right so you can start going to the gym you can start doing the hobbies that you like you can start developing relationships that are satisfying to you that doesn't require you to be a people pleaser that can just requires you to be you okay and then you can start presenting yourself as you are to the world and not caring if others like you or not and that's exactly how you build self-esteem now i already mentioned the downfall and the aftermath of people pleasing and sustained people pleasing tendencies throughout your life or throughout your childhood and teenagehood and adulthood however not being a people pleaser can actually save your life okay there are a lot of people that are terrible people out there that are let's be honest evil there is evil out there i personally believe that there are evil we cannot deny the fact that if there's a good there's bad and if there's good energy there's bad energy and there are a lot of people that are predators out there and predators they love people that are people pleasers because they will readily get them to say yes readily get them to follow them or readily get them to do things for them and now you might think okay sandra you're like exaggerating there's no way like i'm a people pleaser but if someone asked me to like come in their truck i wouldn't no but if someone would ask you to like lift something for them or do something for them and they seem like they were a nice person or they seem like they were like a decent person you would do it with them and then in a split second you would be unconscious and you wouldn't even realize what hit you when you're like that people will take advantage of it you could have people that are not so bad and people that are terrible that are going to take advantage. So you need to be able to be assertive and say no in order to protect yourself. You literally cannot appeal to everyone and you literally cannot nice and people please your way out of dangerous situations. This is why it's very important to stop being a people pleaser. This is why it's very important to grow a backbone and this is why it's very important to protect your space. This is physical space, emotional space, spiritual space and financial space. You cannot let other people abuse you and that's why you need to protect yourself. And of course course before some people comment down below being like but people are going to abuse you anyway yes but do you let, let them do you give them an extra reason to pick you as the target no i'm sorry but no that's not how it works it, it took me a very long time to realize that 
that's not how it works in life like if they can sense that you're a people pleaser if they can sense that you're going to be the one to say yes they're going to go for you it makes sense to me to me it makes sense why would i ask someone who's going to give me a no answer when i can ask someone that's going to give me a yes answer this is just basic human psychology yes not every person is a bad person yes not every person is a good person however you need to protect yourself you owe it to yourself and that's why you need to Put your needs, put your boundaries, put your values first. And then after, when people can respect that and when you can respect that in other people, then you can like join and, you know, do activities together or whatever. But besides that, you're going to be a target of a lot of abuse. And that doesn't mean that I'm victim blaming. It just means that you need to learn how to protect yourself more and value yourself more. Tip number eight is that you don't have to fit in. Yes, we want to fit in. Yes, we want to live in a community, in a society. We want to, you know, find our people. However, you don't have to force yourself to fit in somewhere. That just means that these are not your people. That just means that this is not your environment. And it could be that for a very long time, you don't feel like you fit in. And that's probably because you're meant to stand out. And when you stand out, then you're gonna attract the people that are more like you. And then you're gonna attract people that are more aligned with your message. So sometimes you have to stand out. Sometimes you have to take risks. Sometimes you have to be like, okay, I don't fit in here. Like I respect everyone else in here, but I just cannot, you know, continue being friends with you or I cannot continue being in this group and I need to leave, right? Or I need to move or I need to do this. And that's okay. Sometimes you're just meant to be different. And by being different and by embracing your differences, you will literally attract other people like you you will literally find other people like you it's by going against yourself that you keep yourself stuck that you keep yourself as a people pleaser and that you don't find people that will value you for you as oscar wilde once said be yourself because everyone else is taken and that's why you need to embrace being yourself so those were my tips as to how to stop being a people pleaser. I hope you found this video helpful. I feel like in this video, I was a bit more tough love than I usually am. I usually am all about self-love, but I think in this regards, this is about self-love and this is really about looking yourself in the mirror and realizing and recognizing this isn't me, this hasn't been me, this is probably a trauma response or this is probably my fear of X, Y, and Z as in like fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, fear of being bullied, fear of being casted out of society that pushed you to be the way that you are but you can change and you can start embracing who you truly are and start putting your foot down and start loving yourself the way you are and start presenting yourself the way you are and just protecting yourself while doing so. I think that everyone deserves peace, everyone deserves to live their authentic life, everyone deserves to have boundaries, have their boundaries respected, and everyone deserves real love, not conditional or fake love, right? So you need to know who you are in order to attract that, accept that, and receive that in life. I would love to hear your journey from people pleasing and what you've learned and how you've changed being that way and what are some of the tips that you would recommend other people. As always, please keep in mind to stay respectful and to you know talk about your experiences if you feel so compelled or feel comfortable. Everyone be respectful in the comment and just know that this video is not aimed to put down people that love to make other people smile or love to be kind to other people. Being kind, okay, and being intentional with your kindness is two different things. Being nice is not really being nice to yourself. So in the end, you're not actually being nice. It's an illusion. So I want everyone to be kind to themselves in order to be kind to the world around them and in order to accept kindness from the world around them. As always, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. I post new videos every single week and I'll see you on the next shelf. Bye!